Today, we're going to be achieving an awesome look for the slideshow auto layout in 7.1. So here I have the final result that we're going to be achieving. And as you can see, we have our lovely image on one side of the slideshow and we have the content on the other side of the slideshow. And then because I'm using transparent images, we can see the background that is sitting behind them. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to hop onto my 7.1 site. And then I first want to show you all of the settings that I'm using in case that you want to recreate the exact same look. First of all, I have a background image added to this slideshow here because since I'm working with images that have a transparent background, I wanted the actual background of the entire section to show through. So what I added was just a rectangular blank image or actually it has like a white background on it. And then I have these green circles that you see here, I have one here and here. And then I have these other two circles here. So that's like an entire banner image that I uploaded to this section. Then for the actual content of the slideshow, I have the image, the title, the body and the button turned on. So that's all the information that you see over here. As for the actual content, the way that I separated all of the different um, text that I have in here was by setting that number. So it's sort of like the number of the slide. I added that as a title here to be able to separate it from the rest of the body text. And then what I did was just add that first um, text that you see here, this first line of text. I just added that in caps and I made it bold. So it's not really a different paragraph style or anything that I'm using here. It's just the same part of the description of the slideshow. Now let's take a look at the design aspect. So again, I'm using the banner slideshow layout. I have the layout width set to inset. I just want mine to be a little bit narrower, but you can use any other setting that you want for this and for any of the other um, options that you have inside the slideshow. I have my vertical padding set as small, the alignment to the left, I have infinite scroll enabled, and I have show adjacent, adjacent slides disabled. As for the style, I just modified the different fonts for the different text that I have in here. I set this as a cart so that I could control the background of this section through the colors panel. And then I have the padding set as M for that card. I have the arrows showing at the bottom of the slideshow and to the left side, as you can see them over here. And then for the size and the space, I have the slide padding set to small, the minimum slide height set to small, the slide content width set to small, space between elements set to medium, space between slides set to small, vertical position in the middle, and horizontal position to the left side. So those are the settings that I'm going to be working with, but feel free to experiment with any other. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that I want to do here is modify the placement of the image. So right now we can see how it's set, sort of like a background for the entire slide. And I want it to sit to the side of the card over here. So let's take a look and see what we need to modify to be able to make that happen. Usually when you see something that is sitting on top of something else, one of the two things is set to position absolute to be able to set the other thing in front of it. So let's take a look at which of the two things, either the content side or the thumbnail side, are set as position absolute to be able to revert that and set it to position relative. So let me take a look through here. This seems to be the entire container holding all of the different slides. And I know that because it's a UL element, so that's an unordered list. So usually this is used for carousels and slideshows and things like that to be able to have like a group of things inside the same element. So here we have the first slide and then we have the second slide and here we have a third slide. If we take a look inside the first slide, we're gonna see that we have two containers. So one of them is for the actual content area of the slide and the other one is for the image of the slide. So here we can see that if we stand on the content side, we can see that this one already has position relative. So this is not the one that we need to modify. That one is already in place, basically. If we take a look at the other one, though, we can see that this one was set as position absolute by Squarespace. And that's the reason why it's sort of sitting behind the content that we have on the left side here. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be targeting that container for the media thumbnail image thing. And then I'm going to give this a position of relative as well so that I'm able to then position things side by side. So I'm going to be targeting this using the same selector that Squarespace is using here because I feel like this is going to be convenient for me. It's going to identify the type of auto layout that I'm using, which is the slideshow one. And it's also targeting the actual container that I want to target basically. So I'm going to use this selector here and I'm going to go into my custom CSS window and I'm going to set this to position relative. So once I do that, you're gonna see that now the image doesn't cover the entire background of the slide. It's now sitting to the side of the content that we have here. Now this looks really good so far and you can pretty much stop here if this is all you want to achieve. However, I wanna have my image on the right side of the slide. I don't wanna have it on this side. So let's take a look and see how we can make that happen. If we look, for the actual container that is holding both the content side and the image side. We're gonna see that this one has been set as a flex element. So you can see that because of this little tag that some Chrome browsers or most um, of the newest Chrome browsers have inside the developer tools, or you can see it here inside the CSS side where it says display flex. So that means that our job is going to be super easy here because basically all we need to do is determine the new direction that we want these two elements to have. So instead of sitting like this, the way they are right now, which is simply the default set to row. So we have the first element sitting on the left side and the second element sitting on the right side. So here you can see the first element, the second element. What we're going to do is we're going to flip that by using flex direction row reverse. So that is literally going to reverse the order in which these two elements sit. So instead of having the first one on the left side and the second one on the right side, we're gonna have that inverted. So let's do that. I'm going to be targeting this through this little selector here because again, it's targeting the type of auto layout that I'm working with. I don't want to affect any other auto layout. So that's why I'm making sure that I have that selector in here. And then it's also targeting my target container. So great. Let's go ahead and grab that. And I'm going to be using here flex direction row reverse. And once I do that, you're going to see how everything flips. And now I have my image on the right side and my content on the left side. Okay, so this is looking really great so far. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other slides. All right, so these are looking fairly good. However, I can see how the images are getting cropped here and here. And in this case, I don't really like this happening. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to look for the image themselves and I'm going to make sure that they fit within the boundaries of the area where they're being contained so that this cropping doesn't happen and I can see the full image on this particular side of the slide. So I'm going to look for the image element itself. So I'm going to go into the slide media container, so the container that is holding the image portion of my slide, and I'm going to open this up. And here I can see where the image element is located. And if we take a look at the CSS that we have up here, we're gonna see that there is an object fit property set to cover. So what this is doing is basically allowing the image to stretch out to cover all of the edges of the container that is holding it. Right now, this doesn't really work for me because again, like I said, I don't want my images to be cropped. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change that object fit for contain. What that's going to do is avoid my image from getting cropped because it's going to stop it from going beyond the boundaries of the container that's holding it. To target this image, I'm actually going to use this selector that we have down here because as you can see, we don't have a selector up here or not one that we can use because these styles have been applied to the image directly. But I'm going to be using this one here because this one is also targeting the image element itself and it includes that user items list binary slideshow class that can help us identify the auto layout for the slideshow only. So I'm going to be grabbing this selector here and I'm going to add this in here. I have two periods there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to object fit contain. 
So right now, nothing is really happening because the original value was added up here. If it's added up here or if it shows up here, it means that it was added directly to the image element or any other element that you're currently looking at. And that means that to be able to override those values, we're going to have to use important in our code. So I'm going to add that in here. And like that, you're going to see how the image shrunk down and now it's not cropped anymore. So if we take a look at the other images, you're going to see how we can see the entire edges and everything about the image because, again, it's not getting cropped by the container that's holding it. And then here we have our image, which was looking fine from the beginning, but now you can be sure that it's not going to get cropped. All right, now I want to add a little bit more space between the image and the card because my image file doesn't really have a lot of white space around it. So I feel like this is way too close to the content side. And then this one is also very close and this one is really, really close. So I want to add a little bit more breathing room in between the two things. I'm going to go back to the container that I targeted here, which is the thumbnail side. And then I'm just going to give this a margin. So let's go ahead and do a margin to the left of about uh, like 90 pixels or something. All right, I think that looks pretty good. We have a lot more space in between both things. This is looking really good. Okay, I think I'm happy with that spacing. I'm going to leave that as it is. Okay, and now for the content side, let's go ahead and make those curved sides here and here. So the way that we're going to be doing this is by using the border radius property on the container that already carries the background color. And we're going to add that border radius only to the two corners. So to the top right one and to the bottom left one. So let's take a look and see what we need to target here to be able to achieve our customization. So going back into our slide, we have our slide here. We have the media container. So the one that's holding the image on this side and we have the slide content um, container on this side. So it looks like this is the exact element where that background color was applied, as you can see it here on the right side. So that's the one that I'm going to be targeting to add that border radius. So to target this, instead of using the selector that Squarespace has here, because this one is way too specific, it even indicates things that has to do with the type of theme that's being applied. And I don't want my border customization to be linked to anything regarding color palettes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build my own selector. So I'm just going to grab one of the classes in here. This one that says uh, we have slight content and then we also have list item card background, list item rich animation, pre slide slide slide. Okay, I feel like this one slight content is going to be the best one to go. So I'm going to grab this one here. And then to make sure that I'm only making this customization for the slideshow auto layout, I'm going to reuse that selector from the four that says user items list banner slideshow. So let's go ahead and add this in here to construct our list of selectors just like that and now let's go ahead and set those borders so i'm going to start with the top right one so border top right radius and i'm going to set this to five viewport width that's what i used before and then i'm going to set the border bottom left radius to five viewport width as well. And now we have a lovely looking card inside our slideshow. So let's take a look at the other slides. This is looking awesome so far and we're actually kind of done with desktop right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at mobile because there are going to be things that we're gonna have to modify. You know how it is. So let's take a look at the mobile preview here. Right now, you can see how everything is sitting side by side, which is definitely not ideal for these smaller devices. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the direction again of the Flexbox container. So the one that's holding the content side and the image side so that we can set things in a column. So this is actually going to be a very flexible way to set things up on mobile because you're going to be able to choose whether you want the image to be at the top or at the bottom of the content. So let's go ahead and create a media query here because I only want this to happen on smaller screens. And here you can decide when you want this to happen. So I feel like I want this to happen at around a tablet size perhaps. So let's go ahead and set this to 960 pixels. 
And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to target the same container that I did before. So again, the entire slide that is holding both the content side and the media side. And I'm going to change that flex direction value from row reverse to column. And then once I do that, you're gonna see how things automatically stack. So we have here the image at the top and then we have the content at the bottom. Now I think I want that inverted, so I'm going to be using column reverse in here. All right, and just like that, now I have my content at the top and I have the image at the bottom. Now, I don't know if you can notice, but we have some like overflowing of the images happening here and that's looking a little bit weird. I don't really like that. So the reason this is happening is because of that margin left that we gave to the thumbnail container for desktop. So what we're gonna do is we're going to remove this on mobile. So I'm going to be targeting in that slide media container and I'm going to change that margin to the left and set it to zero. So margin left, zero. All right, awesome. So we don't have any sort of overflow happening anymore. All right, so I wanna take a look at tablets. So I'm going to open this up. Oops like this and I'm going to shrink down my screen a little bit to see what things look like when I hit my media query breakpoint uh, which is kind of around there so I feel like we could still have things side by side at this point though like, there's still a little bit of room so what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify that media query. I'm going to set it to 767, which is the breakpoint that 7.1 uses for a lot of stuff. So I want to use that number and take a look again. All right, that's definitely much better. I mean, I feel like the text could be a little bit shorter to make this look better, but it's it's fine it's good enough so i'm going to leave it that way and then here once we have everything in a column it looks really good however i'm noticing that at this point we don't really have space between the image that we have here and the content of the slide but we do have some when we reach this point so what I'm going to do is I'm going to see what Squarespace is doing at this particular point for the image or the content. Uh, it seems to be the content actually. So I'm just going to take a look here and see um, what they're using to create the space. So if we take a look at the website here, you're going to see that we have a padding, sorry, a margin at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for that margin value and it seems to be 88 pixels. And then all I have to do is grab the same snippet that again, Squarespace is using because it's targeting my target container and it's also targeting the, or indicating the type of um, auto layout that I'm working with. So I'm going to be grabbing that and then I'm going to be adding that inside of my media query and I'm going to set that same number because I like that spacing. Um, that spacing value. So let's go ahead and set the margin to the bottom to 88 pixels in there. And then if we take a look at this again, once we hit that breakpoint, we should have the space. Yes, perfect. All right, so we have the space here and then it continues on onto the mobile breakpoint for much smaller screens. All right, so there you have it. This is how you can create a really cool looking slideshow auto layout in 7.1 for your client projects.